New year, new problems, new day. It's a new episode of the Cheetah Podcast. Tyson Fedora, Monagahi, and Jared Featherstone, as per usual. Boys, we're back into the grind of BCIT daily life here. I have to admit, it feels good to be back behind these mics being being back in school. It feels nice. It feels like we never left. It's a nice feeling of familiarity, eh, boys? It's mm-hmm. going to be good this year, I think. Last year has to be good. Last year has to be good, exactly right. And uh, I guess we we'll just kick things off. Your summers. It felt like yesterday we are here, May 15th, leaving these confines of SE10, but... It's already September 4th, and we're back at it. And what did you guys do over the summer? I know, Jared, you were doing some uh, work with the lacrosse, doing some camera work. Can yeah, you I was uh, I was working with PlayfulScreen.com uh, as a camera op and webcaster. So I was basically getting paid to watch a lot of lacrosse all summer, watching WLA, BCJ, uh, lacrosse. I mean, getting to shoot in historic Queens Park Arena every week was pretty pretty cool, uh, as well as being out in Cam Neely watching Maple Ridge Berards. Make it to the WLA final, but just couldn't quite pull it out. Shout out to the hometown of this guy, Maple Ridge. Maple <laughs> Ridge, <laughs> Ridge guy. I'd do it up. Yeah, well, summer was good. Summer was good to uh, spend a little bit of time away from school and trying to refresh a little bit. Did some work with the Whitecaps. Uh, their season is still going on, and I'll hopefully continue that until the uh, summer. Hopefully they don't do make a, it into the playoffs and have a playoff game, but... We'll uh, have to see how that transpires. Yeah, for sure. And uh, everyone's uh, going their separate ways starting next week, I guess. Jared, you're going to be over at uh, NW, so you're going to enjoy that. You, are you doing the sports over talk, there as well? I'll be, uh, I'll be joining NW Sports next Monday. Uh, I'll be on the afternoon shift, is, and I'm really excited. I mean, excited to hopefully cover some Canucks training camp and some Lions, uh, some Lions action as well. I'm yeah. really excited. Keep your ears tuned for the voice of Jared Featherstone on AM 980. <laughs> <laughs> and if not AM 980, you can tune into PlayfulScreen.com in a couple of weeks when the BC Major Midget League starts up and you'll find myself and uh, and Tyson, of course, calling games for Valley West Hawks for me and the Northwest Giants. Crosstown for, uh, rivalry. September 20th. That uh, gets going. A lot of uh, stuff to do before then for the BC Major Midget League. But, uh, you guys play each other? Yes, it's going to be It's four not times a, a year, but it's, it's not until, I believe, December, where it's uh, right in November it'll be. So, so it's it's who's going to be fighting over that prestigious view at uh, Burnaby Winter Club? And I don't know. Who's going to get the... I don't know about road games <laughs> this year, though, hey? I don't know. I think uh, we've got the LEC, so I'm pretty happy with where I'm calling my games from. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really Tyson's need to go to BWC. going to be freezing his bun off. BWC, the only I, best I, part about <laughs> that is uh, the, the historic significance there. What so. I used to do uh, at yes, games there yes, last year... That's what you tell yourself. I used to... I used to mid-broadcast, take off the headphones, run to the heater, turn it on, and then get back in the booth. It was a cold, cold I still build. do that. You know, it was in the middle of training camp back in August, and I had to do that. And I was wearing shorts in that building. It was a dumb idea, but hey, uh, whatever got the job done. But I guess we should uh, kind of sway into some uh, professional sports now, because this is what this podcast is all about. We like to get things going. And it's a big day for a lot of sports fans across North America and across the world because it is the return of the NFL tonight. Seattle. Big game. Uh, one of the best defenses in the league last year going up against Aaron Rodgers. And well, it was the best defense in the league last year. And <laughs> going up against Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay is just going to be another battle of the Titans just like last year's matchup. And it's it's a rematch of the uh, fail Mary in twenty twelve. Yeah. yeah. What was it? What was it? The uh, something interception that it was. Uh, well, well, there's a famous picture. I think it was mm-hmm. in the newspaper of uh, of the catch, and and uh, one official is waving it off, and the other official is touchdown signal. So it was it was just a just a funny picture yeah. of what yeah. a mess the replacement officials were at that time. But they've got it figured out and uh, should be good to go. 5.30 kickoff down at CenturyLink Field. Should be buzzing in Seattle this afternoon. Who's your guys' picks for uh, tonight's game? Well, I, this you, you can look at it and Seattle can really make a case to be repeat Super Bowl champions for the first time in 10 years by any other team. So It's tough to do. It's tough to do. 
but there's a very, very high chance that it could happen this year, and I would not be surprised one bit if they do. So I'm going with Seattle, not because they're the, they're the closest team to us in our vicinity, but I believe that they have a chance to go all the way again, and hey, it can happen. So uh, you yeah, know what? what you guys know? I, uh, I've got Seattle as my defense on uh, – on my on one of my fantasy rosters, and I got Jordy Nelson as my starting wide receiver on another fantasy roster. So you can tell where my allegiances are, and it's absolutely nowhere. But what I can say for certain is that a lot of people are overvaluing Seattle this year, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a drop off this year as compared to last year when they were so dominant coming in, when teams would come into the CenturyLink field and the twelfth man would just take over the game. I think it's going to be a little bit different this year. People are gunning for them. They're not going to be quite as good as you might as you might think. Well, yeah, the Super Bowl hangover. You saw what happened to the Baltimore Ravens, and having said that, they ha- the Ravens were completely going in different directions. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, they were it, they were without a lot of key players. When you team. have every week of the season a team prepping for you and bringing their A game to beat the champions, it's going to be tough. And we see it happen in every sport. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks always go on and say that each team tries to play their best game against you. So the Seahawks have to be ready for that. And uh, they're no secret anymore. And maybe last year, towards the beginning of the year, people were not familiar with what kind of defense or what kind of building they're going to uh, into when they're playing the still Seahawks. Kind of, uh, still kind of writing them off as, you know, flash in the pan, mm-hmm. sort of, you know, uh, Pete Carroll just, you know, thinking he's a rah-rah college coach. And, you know, he's not going to stand up to the actual Titans in the NFL. But look at that. I mean, they, they come out with the... The Vince Lombardi Trophy last year, and they're for real. And and what what was interesting about last year is it was almost like never in doubt that the Seahawks were going to go all the way. I mean, it, when they were going on their their run and and the record they finished with going into playoffs, they they were favorites each and every week, and especially uh, having the home playoff games and and we know how and well that place it, is always rocking down there too. It's 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 a beautiful stadium. I I, I had a chance to go this summer to uh, watch a soccer game, which isn't as crazy, but it's just a beautiful uh, venue to watch. And Seattle does a good job of having both their stadiums open, and and you can see half the city from your seats, which is I mean, great we know, location. We, we know how beautiful the city is as well. So I'd recommend it to go watch any sporting event in that city. It doesn't have to be just an NFL game. Yeah, and of course, Packers and Seahawks, the only game on the dock tonight. Uh, but Sunday is, that's going to be a really busy day. Uh, with all the ownership issues going on with the Buffalo Bills, they'll be playing Sunday, of course, against the Bears. Uh, you got tons of games going on. You're talking about the Titans before playing the Chiefs. So you got some uh, solid, solid matchups this weekend going into Monday as well. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here with the NFL. And uh going into tonight a lot of people excited especially around here because uh you know people have got their teams and their picks already so and it's relatively newer thing uh, the the thursday night game and uh it's it's i've kind of gotten it's taken me time to get used to having football on thursday and just such big matchups i mean they had monday night sunday night and now they have thursday night and i which reminds me, I should probably set my lineup <laughs> <laughs> before we get finished before up. Before we get finished finish. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got some time. Well, well, well you know, if, off, if you so. count the CFL as well, BC Lions play Friday night. So you yeah. got you got football, CFL and college. I mean, you got football from Thursday until Monday straight. Yeah. And that's what it's going to be like for a couple of Football couple fans here. rejoice. Well, I mean, night night game, it's, I, I know the, the Lions um, are trying to move away, I think it was, from, from the afternoon games because of low, low attendance. So night games are definitely where you make your bread and butter in an outdoor sport like football, and uh, we're all excited to watch that. Yeah, they're, they're in Ottawa this Friday, correct? Uh, I believe they are. The Lions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Red sure. Blacks, who yeah. have, I mean... Had a ha- tough Yeah, haven't it. had the best <laughs> expansion season, if you want to call it that, but uh, I mean, anything can happen in the CFL. Yeah, and I mean, you look at it, and it pretty much has this year. Yeah, <laughs> East going. What's the combined record? It's like twenty five. It's three shocking. Or yeah, one and seven, one and eight. Just teams out in the East have just uh, 
not been up to par, and it's normally like that, but not that yeah. that much. Well, usually, you, usually, usually you have drop off with Montreal, and well, yeah, Mon- yeah. yeah, that's what you. That's what the problem is. Usually, you have Montreal keeping the away. West honest, right? And Toronto will come up and have a couple good games here and there, but I mean, there's just been nobody out of the East this year. Yeah, and Toronto's on a three-game losing streak yet; they're still top of the East out there. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's it, it'll be interesting. It's been a tough year for the BC Lions comes down to, of course, Travis Lule being out. but uh, He's back in the, the starting role. He's back, yeah. which is uh, finally. But when is it ever going to be he's going to have a full season? And don't count the, the lines out yet. No, I mean, they've always got that crossover spot. And yeah. who knows, that might even be the easier road to get to the Grey Cup uh, coming to Vancouver <laughs> in Hosting November again, this year, yeah. right? Well, they, I mean, they, they won last time it was here. They yeah. get the crossover. They're playing against a pretty weak Eastern Division. and They could, they could feasibly end up as the away team. Mm-hmm. At BC, at place. BC Place. Yeah, it's you guys thinking about going to that? The, the, the Great Cup? Cup? Yeah. I've never been to a Great Cup. It would be something that would be interesting. Um, it obviously would depend who's in it for me. I mean, obviously I'd go to see I, I think regardless of whoever's in it, it's always going to be an exciting atmosphere. And, I mean, I really hope it sells out, even if the lines aren't in it. But, I mean, we'll, we'll wait and see how that happens. Well, let's uh, switch gears then, uh, heading on over to, I guess, another relevant team right now at this time of year, the Toronto Blue Jays, and coming off a huge win yesterday down in Tampa, have a chance to sweep the series tonight down in Tampa and going for five straight wins. Now, a lot of people were writing them off a couple weeks ago with a number of games of losing streaks, Uh, but they're going for five straight now, and they're four and a half games back at that second wild card spot, so... Blue Jays looked good last night and have that chance to sweep the Rays tonight. And what's going to take for these guys to push for that second wild card spot? Because clearly they're not out of it at all right now. Well, I mean, it's going to take a lot of luck for them to get yeah. back into it, right? Because they've got to win. They've almost got to win out. And they've got to hope that three guys ahead of them are having losing records for the rest of the That's year. That's the problem, I think, with, with the position the Blue Jays find themselves into is they have to leapfrog three teams for that spot. And Seattle's playing very good baseball right now. And uh, You can never count out the Yankees as well. And Yankees, Detroit is always going to be there as well. As far as the, the, the team that should be in that second wild card, it would be definitely Detroit with the pitching staff they have and the offense they have. But the Blue Jays... And we saw throughout the month of August the offense have dried up. And the last three games, I think it's it's the first time they've had back-to-back multiple home run games since early July. So you pretty much see that the Blue Jays, for them to win games, they have to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And that's what they have began to do, and that's what uh, is giving them this little win streak. But, again, pitching is is got to be there. It doesn't have to be perfect. The Blue Jays don't yeah. have the well, best rotation. Well, but. Stroman had a pretty good game last night. He pitched six and uh, only allowed two runs. And I think uh, by the end of the game, they had 10 hits or something like that. But again, Stroman serviceable on the bump for the Jays last He's night. He's been a very good, uh, su- not a surprise, but I don't think many people expected him to be this dominant this early in his career. I mean, a former Vancouver Canadian, uh, which kind of makes me wish I saw him when he was out here. But mm-hmm. He's been he's been maybe their most consistent pitcher in the second half. I know Mark Burley's on the uh, on the mound tonight. He hasn't won a game since before the All Star game, so it's almost like he's due to finally get over that hump. I think he's third all time consecutive starts without picking up a W, and and it's just been such a weird season for Mark Burley, who started off so well and uh, dropped off like he has but if the Jays can pull one out today they're right back in the thick of things and we yeah. got a full month of baseball and you see this happen in baseball the teams go out throughout a terrific se- September runs yeah. carry that into the playoffs you know, we saw the Cardinals do it back in 08 and yeah there's plenty of it's plenty of time exciting, left yeah. but it's they they are going to need a lot of luck as well not well, good news though not very good news for the Jays is that Brett Lowry is out for the rest of the year and uh, he won't be coming back as in the guy they would m- most likely want to have in the lineup. Mm-hmm. I believe it's what, eight games they've got left? So is it? Uh, More than eight. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a, yeah, 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 no. So, but they get their next eight, though, you're like, you got three against the Red Sox, of course, one and eight against the Rays. Mm-hmm. 
and then uh, the Cubs, and then you got another set against the Rays as well. So, yeah, it's gonna be. You got to win those AL divisional games. And, and, and the Rays are pretty much down and out, which works in Toronto's favor. Yeah, and, and so are the Red Sox and back. so are the Cubs. So those are three teams that are not in the playoff picture. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe the other teams they're chasing are continuously playing against each other, mm-hmm. which is also helpful. If the Jays can get on a winning streak, it can be done. Crazier things have happened. Well, I guess uh, we haven't really talked hockey. There's not much to talk. But I guess uh, finally the lawsuit has been settled with Steve Moore and... Todd Bertuzzi, there was rumblings about it a couple weeks back, but today Steve Moore announced that it has been settled. They were supposed to go to court Monday, uh, but uh, he basically says it's finally been reached with Bertuzzi ten and a half years later. And uh, you got to feel bad for a guy like Steve Moore, but at the same time, we're not going to get into this because there's no time. But, uh, yeah, it's finally settled, and I guess finally can be put to bed now, and no, no one has to... Really yeah. go on, but well, you, you feel good for. I mean, you feel good for Todd having that uh, out of the way. Of He's yeah. been yeah. playing with that hanging over that dark cloud over his mm-hmm. shoulders for h- ten years now, and that yeah. that's obviously in some way gonna affect his performance. I mean, he's still been making a living playing with the Detroit Red Wings with with Anaheim, I believe, for for a short stint. Florida for a bit too. That was but very rare. I mean, he's still a free agent this year and. Hopefully this means he can focus and play a couple more years out because I know he wants to. Yeah, I just don't think he's got the – he doesn't have the skating anymore. I mean, I, I don't know if he anybody's going to pick him up other than outside of a, a tryout offer, you know? But yeah, no one has, so it's a good sign or bad sign for Todd. Yeah. That no one and, has And already. it's too bad that the, la- the latter part of his career was kind of marred by this mm-hmm. lengthy court process, but uh, Steve Moore's got to do what Steve Moore's got to do. So. Yeah. And one thing that uh, I came into realization last week when this news came out is at the time of this uh, hit, Steve Moore was only about 26 years old. So he was a young guy still. At the, uh, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, he was a Just young player. And, 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 so, yeah. and, and, and you know, it's, it's tough to say what he could have made out of his career. I mean, he wasn't the best skilled guy, but he still had a lot well, of years left to go. Well, all in all, having been hurt at that young age probably helped him out in legal proceedings because of the potential yeah. earning factor right yeah i mean not, o- not only being in the nhl but he's also uh, i believe he's an ivy school graduate yeah. yeah so i mean his his future career beyond the game of hockey was impa- impaired by his head injury so he says i mean i'm not gonna say one way or another um but yeah i mean that that goes a lot into it and whether whether I, we won't know what the figure is because I think they have that's what they were uh, mulling over in the last couple of weeks was the mm-hmm. confidentiality agreement yeah. and what they were going to say about what was reached. But I, I think I was reading an article in in I think it might have been the province and it, it was or it was on TSN. It was about Steve Moore and what his life is like now. I mean, uh, they they had t- contacted his brother and asked him what what what's Steve Moore like. And what 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 he's other than like the headaches and 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 the what the doctors say that, that his brother said that Steve's you know he's just it, it, when they go out to a restaurant he just takes takes longer for him to decide on what he wants what he wants to get and just stuff that's just affected his day to day living so it's hard it's hard to I mean it's hard for anybody that hasn't had a concussion to really kind of fathom that. But at the same time, you also, like, you're talking to Steve Moore's brother, and I'm going to play oh. devil's advocate here, and this is in the middle yeah, of a court could, proceeding, yeah, so yeah. he's not going to say, like, oh, yeah, Steve's totally normal guy. Happy when, lucky guy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's not what he's going to be saying because that's not the picture that they're painting for their legal proceedings. So, I mean, you could you could take that both however ways. you want it. You could take that both ways as just posturing. But I know for – I read somewhere that uh, – it was. It had to do with right as soon as Steve got hurt, and his parents are very uh, affluent lawyers, mm-hmm. and so they made sure that they were getting out. And I think they're personal injury lawyer, lawyers, but don't quote me on that. They came out and they basically had the strategy of showing Steve in a neck brace at public com- public pref- press conference. Sorry, um, and basically just playing this whole card right from the get go that he is irreversibly injured for life, and. Whether it's true or not is a totally different story. I mean, you, you have conflicting opinions from a bunch of different doctors and and other people that are closer to the situation than we are. But, I mean, 
what's real and what's not is is completely up in the air. I wonder if they're uh, like they got the Harvey uh, Mike Ross relationship there from uh, Suits. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> not to make a joke of it or anything. Yeah. Too much Suits TV this then. summer. Too you much know. TV, but it's, it's not how it works in real life. No, there, it. <laughs> it is true though. I mean, like they're like how much of how much of Steve Moore's life has been impacted? Like, what's he? Like, yeah, I'd what, like to what, know. What, yeah. yeah, I mean, besides all all the financial and. The strategic the legal. fact the fact that we don't know ten years later what his life is like mm-hmm. kind of brings the question like what the sort of veracity of all of his statements about how hurt he is really is because if he really wanted people to know how he was living then he'd just I mean he was yeah. telling the truth and it would just be open up to the public but I mean that's me Steve, now does Steve live uh, back uh, out east or I, I think he's in Ontario yeah he's out there but he's been he's been here most of the time the last couple yeah. months anyways with court so. Uh, no, but this 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 was out in Ontario. Oh yeah, this one was yeah. But when the they civil had suit the, was in Ontario, yeah, and the the provincial assault assault charge was yeah. like settled years ago, right? Yeah, and that was in Vancouver. But well, uh, quickly before we close here, touch on the Caps uh, coming to their seasons and they're sitting right out of the playoff spot right now in the MLS. Uh, a three 0 loss to Portland on the weekend. And while you were at that game, you got to witness it. It was probably one of the big game, biggest games of the year for the Caps, unable to get it done. Of course, we saw Nigel Real Coker leave the team last two weeks ago, I believe it was, and uh, Rosales coming in. So he's going to try to fill that void as a veteran presence, but they got a tough task against D.C. United on the weekend. And Caps, they always are sitting right there, but the good thing is their fans aren't Toronto FC fans. <laughs> so, Holy! So, uh, the, I mean, for wow! The, I was I, I that's as soon as you brought up MLS, I was like, we're not talking, we're not talking Whitecaps, we're talking about TFC, and what a in, joke! What in disaster. God's name has been happening there? That's a disaster of a franchise, right there. I mean, I understand taking your team in another direction, but when you're still in the playoffs and you have ten games left, what what could have happened to to really? And the fact that Jermaine Defoe was linked with moves to QPR and then over to Aston Villa, over to Arsenal, and didn't get done. And Michael Bradley said it himself, we want guys that want to be here, and if Jermaine's not that guy, then fine. But ever since he's been here, these are my words. This is what Bradley was saying. He's like, Jermaine has put the effort in when he's been healthy and wanted to be here. But it's been a tough year for Jermaine Defoe. Hasn't been healthy. He's got the time when he's out there. He's been scoring a bunch load of goals. But when he's not there... It's almost like the team falls apart, and they've just fallen apart in the last couple of years, anyways. Well, that's who they came built, into the That's MLS. who they're built around is Jermaine up front, and when you lose your your centerpiece, then basically, it's no longer you're no longer a, a bit attacking force because your attacking yeah. piece is gone. Well, the Toronto FC was Tim Laiwicki's sort of project, and when he took over as president of MLSC, he 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 found that the Toronto FC was at a low point. They had they've still yet to play a playoff game in however long since 07 where they came into the league and he spent the money he oh, he he has the relationships with uh managers overseas he brought Defoe in but I figure now that he's on his way out uh you hope that TFC don't sink back to a level which where they were at and, well, and, and I mean, they, all these accusations I mean Julius Cesar who they had in net and was one of their bigger signings has left mm-hmm. already in and with Defoe maybe rumored to be heading out in the summertime. Or even January, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't leave much for the, the fans to look forward to. I mean, it, it could go, here we go all over again, uh, back to the bottom and of I, the MLS. I read an interesting article about this just the other day about how Toronto FC might want to go in the direction of revamping the entire team once again, but with just Canadian players because they want to bring up through the Canadian youth system. Now, if you're going to do that to fans, you bring in Michael Bradley, Julio Cesar, Jermaine Defoe one year, and then you decide to get rid of them all the year after because you want to build from Canadian youth. And you got to say, Canadian soccer, youth soccer, is probably one of the lowest in the world. But what does that excite fans about if you can't even bring a team that they want to see? You're not going to get the attendance levels, and it's going to be... And yeah, we're talking about Toronto and the Toronto market. They're not talking about you know a, a small town. But they, in, but they in have Canada. a good window during so they the don't, year. I don't think Toronto fans care who's wearing that red jersey. They just they just. I want, think they care about W's and they care about results. Yeah, they got they want to win and they want to be known as a, a powerhouse in MLS. The, they, yeah. they the local lo- factor has so little to do with 
how people are going to perceive the Toronto FC uh, squad is because like if they're not winning, it doesn't matter if the kids from down the block, then you're not going to go out watch a losing team, right? Oh, yeah, that's just it. So it's uh, – it's it's if you're a Toronto FC fan, you kind of feel bad for them right now. But hey, uh, that is gonna do it here. We're gonna wrap it up because uh, we are out of time. But thanks for joining us, Amadagahi, Jared Featherstone, as usual. We'll be uh, back next week. Yes, we will. Every Thursday, we shall uh, bring this to you live. So. Friday. Fri- we're doing Fridays now or Thursdays. Yeah, I'm not here Thursdays. Oh yeah, that's right. So it is Fridays. There we go. And uh, yeah, so we'll br- bring it back. My name is Tyson Floor. Thanks again, and we'll catch up with you next week. I like Fridays.